Uh, we're going to talk about uh, push rod adjustment and before we do that uh, I want to talk a little bit about the I guess some of the anatomy of the lifter or give people a visual on what you're actually doing when you adjust a push rod. So what we have here is a, a stock twin cam lifter. Um, it's been cut away so that you can kind of see the internals. Um, basically you have uh, a spring, uh, a one-way valve up here in this, this piston body and then you have uh, the cup for the push rod to fit into in the top and a retaining pin. Okay and so uh, what you're doing when you're adjusting the push rod is the gap between the piston and the bottom of the lifter uh, you're, you're closing that gap and so for the lifter to do its job and adjust uh, or compensate for the growth in engine height and as things warm up and change distances the hydraulic lifter of course this travel has to change and, and take all the valve lash so that your valve train is quiet. Um, so what you're trying to do is to give this the maximum adjustment you want to adjust this piston so that it's in the center of that travel in between this distance here. Well if you measure this with the calipers it's roughly two hundred thousandths of an inch and so what we want to do is is adjust this down about a hundred thousandths of an inch. So uh, an s, &S push rod has thirty two thousandths or thirty two threads per inch. So one revolution gives you 32 thousandths of length in the push rod. So as we try to achieve 100 thousandths, um, we would want to go one turn at 32 thousandths, two turns at 64, three turns at uh, uh, 96, and then just over three turns is going to give you that 100 thousandths. So what we generally refer to uh, for adjustment on a push rod is uh, uh, flats. Um, anytime you're talking in terms of flats, you're, you're essentially referring to a six-sided hexagonal shape. And so you stick a wrench on a set of flats because the wrench is basically shaped like this. And so you turn it once, pull the wrench off, and turn it to the next flat on that hex. And so we, when we turn it 20 flats, we would do that 20 times, okay? or um, sometimes they refer to that as uh, two and a half turns or three and a half turns, that kind of thing. Um, so it can be termed both ways, either flats or in, in the number of turns. So um, another topic that we should cover would be the limited travel spacers. Um, s, s has a product called the LT Kit. It's a limited travel washer. What this washer does is uh, basically turns your hydraulic lifter into a solid lifter. Um, you could take a set of hydraulic lifters out of an engine and generally speaking putting it, a set of hydro or solids in their place would of course not give like a hydraulic lifter will. And so the, the advantage there is that you, you don't have the collapsing of the lifter uh, under high RPM. And so the LT kit of course is going to maintain uh, valve control and and uh, not collapse the lifter at high RPM so that we get the benefit of uh, improved timing. So generally speaking if, if you were to put a, high, a solid lifter in place of a hydraulic you would you would certainly achieve more horsepower and that is the whole idea behind the LT kit. So what effectively happens when you put this in this lifter is that 200 thousandths I was talking about becomes uh, roughly a hundred thousandths. And so when we adjust uh, this lifter down to that washer, we've, we've now raised the floor up and taken away some of this travel. There's still, of course, oil inside of this LT kit. So there's a reservoir of oil there that, that can, of, of course, work its way through the one-way valve and pump up the lifter. But uh, we bring the, the plunger down or the piston down so that it is essentially just above that limited travel spacer or washer. Um, and then uh, we, we will bring it down so it touches and then we back it off one full turn, so six flats. Um, and I'll go through that procedure here actually on a bike so that uh, we can understand better how to do it in the real environment. So with the limited travel spacer uh, installed, you have the benefit of a, a solid lifter with the quiet uh, performance of a hydraulic lifter. We're going to talk about uh, uh, adjustable push rods here. SNS has two versions of adjustable push rods. Uh, we have the standard push rod here, which is uh, 
the cheaper of our push rods. It, uh, in a twin cam, it installs without removing the rocker boxes. Basically, it would have to go up and in and you need to remove the tappet cover. Okay, so not too inconvenient. Uh, very feasible, at least you don't have to remove the rocker box. We also have the quickie push rod and if you can see how the quickie push rod collapses much farther than the standard push rod. And the advantage of that is, of course, that you can install it without removing the tappet cover. Okay? The standard push rod, also uh, on an Evolution engine, you would have to remove the rocker boxes to use the standard push rod. So uh, if, a, if a guy switches to the quickie, you certainly uh, have a little bit more expensive push rod, but you, you certainly will save the money and labor uh, without the added expense of, of removing the rocker boxes and, of course, the tappet cover on a twin cam. The SNS uh, push rod kit comes as you see it here, and it has these uh, uh, tubes and, of course, the, the clips. The tubes that come with it are necessary because the stock tube is substantially longer, and, of course, since it's longer, you can't push it up far enough on the motor to be able to get at the adjuster underneath here. And I'll kind of show you right here if that tube, if the stock tube was in this scenario, you would cover up the adjuster and you wouldn't be able to get at it. Okay? So when you buy a set of SNS push rods, they, they come with a set of tubes so that uh, you can basically install them without taking anything else apart. All right, we're going to go through the procedure to adjust push rods, install and adjust. Um, I've already got one push rod in here, uh, kind of for a visual purpose, but uh, first thing you do uh, before you install a push rod or, or start adjusting them is to make sure that you have the cam or the cylinder that you're going to install the push rods into on the base circle. Um, and how we do that is basically we, we raise the vehicle with the proper jack, uh, pull the spark plugs and put the uh, transmission in high gear. Okay, so to find the proper location of the base circle on the on say the rear cam we're going to set up for, I'm going to watch for overlap on the front cam. Okay, so I want to know when both of these lifters are moving. I'm just going to spin the rear wheel and the outer lifter is of course the exhaust, the inner is the intake and right now I have them both moving. Okay, and of course I could see that this one was not moving at the same time. So I have the front uh, front cam on overlap, the rear cam is on the base circle. Now this particular engine has a set of SNS Easy Start cams. And what that means is on the exhaust uh, lobe we have the compression release trigger. Okay, so if you were to put the cam on the base circle and, and actually stop on that trigger, your valve or push rod would be opened 20, 25 thousandths, okay? And that would give you an erroneous uh, adjustment. So what you need to look for on the exhaust push rod is that you're not on the top of that trigger. And what we'll do now is we'll put in the exhaust push rod and I'll show you that we're not on that trigger or we'll look for that to move. So I got a set of, of quickie push rods here. Uh, SNS tubes. I have my O-ring in place, uh, top and bottom. I'm going to slide this in place, extend the adjuster, and, and run it down until we uh, basically feel the push rod get tight in the cup of the rocker arm up in the box, and of course the cup in the lifter. And that's what we would call, you know, zero lash or run them down until you have no, no lash or up and down movement in the push rod. Okay, so I can feel the, the push rod. You can hear it moving there. I have a little bit of lash and I back it out just a little bit and I can feel it getting tight. Okay, and then there's the adjuster nut that I held up as I was moving the adjuster down. So that's right there ready to be snugged up. Okay, these uh, these push rods have 32 threads per inch, so my target is essentially 20 flats or um, three and a third turns, okay? So I'm going to uh, hold the bottom part of the adjuster and I'm gonna turn the top part of the push rod 20 flats when I go to adjust it, okay? First, we're gonna show you 
the compression release um, set up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark this push rod real quick so we can see it kind of move up and down. Throw a little white marker on here for you. Okay. Now we're going to look for the little bump of the compression release. Right there it was. See so it move up and down ever so slightly. You can hear it click actually too as it goes past the lifter. So I'm rotating the motor forward and the wheel of course in the direction of, of normal rotation and as I see that now I'm going to rotate it forward as I see that lifter go up and come back down I know I'm on the base circle of the cam and then I am past or not on the uh, compression release trigger. So now I'm ready to adjust this this rear cylinder on the exhaust and the intake. Okay. So using a quarter inch wrench on the bottom of the adjuster and a 7 16 wrench on the push rod, I'm at zero lash. I'm going to take this push rod and extend it. 20 flats. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 20 flats right there. Now, knowing that I'm at the right adjustment, I'm going to grab another 7 16 and I'm going to tighten that adjuster nut. Okay, now one thing you'll notice, of course, right away is that what we did by adjusting that after we got to zero lash, we have compressed the valve spring and, of course, opened the valve. So, right now, the valve is open basically a hundred thousandths because that's what we uh, lengthened the push rod by. So slowly over time here in the next few minutes this lifter is going to squeeze the oil out of it, okay? That piston's going to go down to the center of the adjustment and this push rod is going to start to spin freely, okay? And that is important to note because before you can move on to the other cylinder you must wait for this thing to, to bleed down or what will happen is your valve will actually open farther than it should because the lifter hasn't collapsed and it will contact your piston, bend your valves, and ruin your day. So wait for it to bleed down. You should be able to turn it with your fingers. Uh, that's, that's a good, and I certainly cannot turn that with my fingers. So while I'm waiting for this one to bleed down, I'm going to go on. Uh, actually, I've already adjusted the rear one, so that one we can see is I can spin with my fingers. So we wait for this one to bleed down and then uh, we will rotate the engine so that we have overlap in the rear. Verify that we are not on the easy start compression release trigger and adjust the front push rods. Install and adjust. Okay, it's been about five or seven minutes now and, and the push rod are, and is free spinning with my fingers so the lifter has collapsed. Um, so we can move on to the front cylinder. Now if we had the limited travel kit installed in this lifter, um, we would have done the adjustment differently um, kind of as follows. We would have adjusted it down the 20 flats and uh, waited for the lifter to bleed down, okay? Giving it mm, five to seven minutes, maybe 10 minutes. Give it, give it a half an hour if you like. Um, just give it plenty of time to bleed down. And so once, you, once you've given it the time to bleed down, you start to back off the push rod and when the push rod gets free, um, in other words, uh, the spring has closed the valve and all of a sudden the push rod now has no resistance on it to spin, uh, you'll be able to feel that as you back the wrench off. And so you count backwards from 20 flats, 19, 18, generally at 18 flats, okay, the LT kit on a twin cam at 18 flats will, will start to come loose. And so from that, you are now bottomed the piston is now inside the tappet is now bottomed on that 
that LT kit, that washer, and you're going to back the adjustment off one full turn or six flats. Okay, so back it off six flats, lock it down, um, and when you're done with the assembly of the rest of the bike, fire it up um, and give them some time to pump up. So while we're waiting for these push rods uh, and lifters to bleed down so that we can spin them, I uh, want to just take some time to talk about uh, a variety of products that are out there. The, the, you could have push rods from any manufacturer with whatever threads per inch and uh, a lifter from any manufacturer as long as it's a hydraulic one with a, uh, a given amount of travel. We don't know what it is, it doesn't matter. Um, but you, you should be able to adjust uh, hydraulic tappets on any V-twin not knowing what the threads per inch is, not knowing what the travel in the lifter is by simply getting the cam on the base circle, making sure that you are indeed on the base circle. Uh, like we mentioned here, if you have easy start cams, you have the compression release trigger to contend with. Make sure that you're not on that trigger. But as long as you're on the base circle of the cam um, and uh, you've taken the lash out of the push rod, then basically what you want to do is adjust that push rod longer, okay, and adjust it, you know, 20, 40 flats. Uh, start, start small so that you make sure you don't open the valve too far. But basically, you can keep lengthening a push rod, and, and it may take you longer to do this procedure, but uh, if you don't have the instruction sheets or you can't get on the tech line and, and get answers, then this is a way for you to do it yourself. So as you adjust that push rod out, okay, and it bleeds down, if it spins, you're not on the bottom of the travel of the lifter, okay? If you adjust it out and you've waited a half an hour and the lifter uh, doesn't spin, so you've waited plenty of time for it to bleed down, okay, and it doesn't spin, you know you're on the bottom of the lifter. So you start backing off that, that push rod until it starts to spin freely, okay, or the resistance from backing it off gets easier or reduces. So at that point, you know you're at the bottom of the lifter. You, you've counted how many flats you went down and you've counted how many flats you've come back up. And uh, at that point, you know, say you adjusted it down 40 flats, okay? You backed it off 10, so now you're at 30 flats. Well, 30 flats from zero lash is the bottom of the travel of that lifter, okay? So if you wanna be in the middle of the travel, you back it off another 15 and you lock it down. So that, that could be applied to any lifter and any push rod combination uh, imaginable on a B-twin.